Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Bass and More Outdoor. I'm Justin. Um, sorry Mikkel couldn't be with me today. She's actually at a birthday party with all of the kids, but um, we promise you we are going to do a one-year review of the camper with both of us together, as I know a lot of you guys are waiting to see that. Um, in that review, we'll go over some of the likes and dislikes of what we found over the last year with this camper. Anyways, it's been six months since I've seen you guys with the camper. Um, you know, as it was winter and we had it in storage, but I just got it pulled out of storage two days ago and I've been asked to do a dewinterization video for most of my fans as I did a winterization video for this. So this is that video. Of course, with it being summer and us having the camper back now, be looking forward to getting some more uh, videos of us with the camper. We got a couple of videos in mind and we're really looking forward to doing those both Mikel and us together. So with that in mind, we're gonna get started. Now with this, I don't have any particular order that I do this. I do it in the order that I feel I want to do it. So don't, you know, get on me about this. I am an amateur. Um, this is, you know, I've had this camper for just under a year now. This is my first time dewinterizing it. Um, so I might miss a step here and there. And if I do, please just get down in the comments and let me know below. Um, I'd love to hear um, how you do it, the order that you do it and everything else. And by the way, sorry if the audio is a little off. It is kind of breezy out here today. So I went ahead and put on my wind mic. Um, and my wireless mic so that hopefully I can get some really good audio out of this um, and let's just pray that we do but anyway so let's get this started I'm going to take you over to the batteries first and I'll catch you in just a minute okay so one of the first things I like to do is hook the batteries back up I've already put the batteries back in I'm not going to show you that part what I am going to show you is how I wired it though so what I've got here is I've got two six volt batteries instead of 12 volt um, they're the golf cart style batteries um, and my leads for my campers are, uh, are pretty short. These are the factory leads right here. Here's the positive, here's the negative. Um, the negative is just slightly longer so it can reach a little further over than the positive and that's the reason why I have the batteries flipped backwards. So you can see the positive terminal on this side, positive terminal on this side. It's just for the camper wires. Um, but anyways with a 6 volt battery what you're going to do is you're going to wire your positive to your positive on your first battery. From there, you're gonna wire your negative, and you can see the red cable going all the way down and around and over is wired to the positive of your second battery. From there, your negative from the camper is wired to your second battery. And this is what gives you your 12 volt for your camper. Um, this is how I do it. Um, others like to have two 12 volt. Yeah, this is how I do my setup with my six volt batteries. So, um, once I am all finished, I will go ahead and put the cover on. I don't need to bore you guys with that one. You just simply put the cover on and then you've got the straps that strap it down. Pretty sure most of you guys could figure that out. Okay, so next we're gonna go on to the freshwater side and I gotta go get some things for that and I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are over on the um, freshwater fill up. So this would be where you'd hook your water hose up and fill up. This is a um, 60 gallon tank I have inside my camper and the formula I've seen says that it's recommended about a quarter of a cup per 15 gallons. Now in all honesty in my opinion that would put one cup of bleach for my 60 gallon tank but I, I'm not going to fill up all 60 gallons just to flush the pipes out. There's no reason for that. So I'm only going to fill it up a quarter of the way 15 gallons. Um, now, this is not a precise measurement in any way whatsoever. I'm just going to go by the control panel inside the camper, and once it reaches a quarter, I'm going to call it good. Um, so anyway, so based off of that math, if I'm only putting in around 15 gallons, that's a quarter of a cup. Um, so what I've got is just regular cheap bleach from Walmart. It's the cheapest stuff I could find on the shelf, and as you can see, it's concentrated bleach. So it's strong, potent stuff. You've got to be very careful with this. You get it on you. It will ruin your clothes. Joy's about having a camper is camping. Everybody's got a red solo cup lying around. So I use a red solo cup as it is concentrated bleach. I don't want to use a wife's measuring cup. I don't want to use a nice glass, anything like that. I'm just going to use a disposable cup. And I, of course, not the fact that I'm not using a wife's measuring cup or anything like that. I'm just taking a wild guess on about what a quarter of a cup is. Um, it could be a little less, could be a little more. I'm hoping it's a little more. I'd rather pour a little bit more and get a little bit more bleach in here than not have enough. So anyway, so I've already got it in the cup. Um, so what we're going to do is just pour it into the inlet here. 
Um, and this is the other nice thing about a solo cup is you can kind of pinch it to help pour it in. So we're just going to pour it directly in to the water fill until we've got all of it in there. And I'm taking my time because it's trying to come back out the inlet here. You probably can't see that on camera, but as I'm pouring it in, it's wanting to come back out. So definitely just taking my time pouring it. I don't want to drip it all over the side of the camper here. But yeah, so we just emptied this quarter of a cup in there. And we're right there. There we go. So that's all gone. I'm just going to set that down. Now, um, we're going to put water in it. And like I said, we're going to fill it up to right around a quarter of a tank. Now, I've got my nice white, you know, bacterial free hose here, which whenever you fill up your fresh water on your camper, you don't want to use the regular hose that you would have on your house because that gets a lot of bacteria built up in the hose. These hoses are special for RVs. And everything I use in today's video will be linked in the description below. So if you want to see what type of hose it is, you could definitely click on that and take a look at it. Um, Anyway, so I'm going to run over, I'm going to turn the water on, and I'm going to see you back inside the camper at the control panel. All right, so we have water going into the camper now, and here we are at our control panel, and sorry if it looks a little dirty, it looks like we need to do our spring cleaning. There we go, much better. But anyways, as you can see, we're just going to check that fresh water every once in a while. Right now you can still see it's empty. Um, and as you can tell, mine does not go by quarter. It goes by third, two-third, and then full. Um, so I'm just going to take a good guess at a quarter here. It should be just uh, right right as that light starts blinking on that third. We're going to call that good, actually. Um, like I said, I used a little bit um, more bleach because I'd rather be safe than sorry. And it's probably a good thing as I didn't realize. You know, it's been six months since I've been in the camper. But I didn't realize it went by thirds, but that's okay. And there it is. So now we're going to run outside and we're going to shut the hose off. Okay, so now we've got roughly around a quarter. Like I said, it's not a perfect measurement um, by any means, just going off of the control panel. But um, we've got the water hose turned off. We've got the bleach in there. Um, and I like to put the bleach in first because as you pour in the water, it helps kind of stir the bleach up. I forgot to mention that. So now we're back in the camper again, and hopefully you got enough lighting in here. I've literally got the blinds open on every window, and I've got every light on to try to get this as bright as possible in here for you guys. But um, as you come in, you've got the, the U-shaped dinette here, and then you have this cabinet right here. We're going to go inside this cabinet. And as you can see, I've taken out the board that protects it there just for easy access, but uh, most campers, when you open it up, is going to have a board here hiding all this stuff. Um, but as you can see, this is where you have let me get this camera straight your pipes and all of your different y connections what you've got is this hose right here which you can see it's turned on to right there is the hose that pumps in the antifreeze fluid this hose right here which loops it around and goes down into the pump is what comes from the city connection so when you're hooked up to city water and then the other end of it goes all the way down to the fresh water tank so what we're going to do is this knob right here is we're going to switch it over to that. So what that does is it opens it up this way, so it's coming out of the pump now and through the fresh water and no longer through this, so it blocks this off. So now, oh, pardon me. Now what we got to do is go back over to our control panel. We're going to turn on our water pump. Now you can hear our water pump running. Maybe I can hear it super quiet so what we're gonna do we're just gonna let the water pump run for just a second and while it's doing that I'm gonna switch you over to the tripod and I'll catch you guys in just a second okay so it took a couple of minutes here but the pump has finally gotten the fresh water cycled from the tank to the pump so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna remove one cover no reason to remove both and I'm just gonna turn on the cold water first and it should come out all antifreeze, all foamy. And what we're going to do is we're just going to leave that running until it starts to come out clear and smells like bleach. Um, and that's the key thing is you want to smell that bleach. That's the way you know that you're clean all the way from your fresh water to here. And this should take a little bit as I have that big water filter that doesn't have the filter in it right now. And it's got to get all of 
the antifreeze cycle out of there and you can see it's taken a minute. Um, maybe I'll show you that real quick. So as you can see, that water's definitely taking a minute to cycle through that, that canister. Okay, so I can see that all the antifreeze is now out of that. And in all honesty, while I was thinking about this, it might have been a little faster and easier if I'd removed the filter housing first, dump that fluid out, and then put it back on. Because it took a long time for it to cycle that out. I could definitely smell bleach. So let's turn that off. And we're going to do the hot water now. See, and it's pink again. You can see pink is gone. I do smell the bleach. Definitely smell the bleach again. So we're going to shut that off. And now what we're going to do is move to the bathroom. We have three things in here we have to do. We have to do the faucet, we have to do the toilet, and then we have to do the shower. So what I'm going to do is start with the faucet. And since we've already done one line and got a lot of that out, the rest of this should go pretty quick. We should see a little bit of pink and then turn white. So let's get this started with the faucet first. And again, we're going to start with that cold water. And man, pink has gone right away. And you can see that water's clear. It's not foamy. And it smells like bleach. Pull that drain plug, that would help. Huh? So now we're going to do the same with the hot water. You can see that pink coming out. Pull that drain again. And there, the pink is gone. And it smells like bleach. Now the toilet. We don't have to worry about smelling like bleach so much because we're not drinking out of the toilet. So let's get that flushed. And if most of you don't know, there's a little foot pedal right here on the side. You just hold that down and that's what flushes your toilet. So just going to do this until we see no more pink. And I still see a little bit and there we go. Pink is gone. Now you want to keep a little bit of water in there so that that seal stays nice and wet so I'm just gonna add a little bit more extra water in there and there we go now we're gonna go over to our faucet and make sure the drains open and again I'm gonna start with that cold water now that's cold that's hot so it's cold and as you can see that pink was gone pretty quick and again we're not drinking out of the shower so we don't have to smell that bleach but I'm sure it's there a little hot water And as you can see, that's gone pretty quick. Now the fun part is we got to do the shower head as well too. So all I'd like to do is just take it out, set it down. I'm going to turn on that cold water again and just get all that pink out of that faucet, that shower head. So there we go. Turn that back off. And there we go. Bathroom is now uh, dewinterized as well, too. Well, almost. It's got the antifreeze out of it. We still have a long ways to go. So now we're going to hop outside the camper, and I will catch you out there. Okay, so here we are at the outside shower. We're going to start doing the outside faucets. Before we do the outside faucets, um, the antifreeze I use is environmental-friendly antifreeze, but I'm still weirded out about those and especially on YouTube video I want to make sure I'm doing this as good as possible so we've brought a nice little bucket so what I'm going to do is with the bucket this is going to be difficult um, I'm going to hold the shower head and I'm going to turn on the cold water first and same as before we're going to wait until the pink is gone which it's gone turn off that cold water turn on the hot water same thing wait until the pink is gone which it's all gone so now we're going to go around to the side. And then what I do with this bucket, which I'll show you at the end, I don't know, maybe not, but what I'm going to do with the bucket is once I'm all done, I'm just going to dump this down the toilet. Um, and then once we're all done with this winterization, I'll go over this again, but we're going to go down to the city um, dump where you dump your um, sewage while you're camping and everything else and just put it down there because they're okay with you doing that. So. Okay, so here we are with our last 
one and it's on the side of the camper here. So we've done the kitchen sink. We did the bathroom sink. We did the toilet. We did the shower. We did the outside shower. The only other faucet left is this um, spray hose out here on the outside. So again, same thing. We're just going to turn on that cold and we're going to let the water run until we don't see pink anymore. And there we go. Turn that off. We're going to go back to the hot and we're going to let that run until we don't see pink anymore. And look at that. That surprised me. It came out clear at first because of the water in the hose. Then it came out pink. Now it's clear again. Okay. So as of right now, we have now gotten all the antifreeze out of our lines. Um, so now what we're going to do, we're going to start all over again. But first we're going to drain that fresh water tank and get that bleach out of there. So let's hop on over there. So here we are back on the side of the camper where we initially filled our water up into our fresh water tank. Um, right underneath it is the plug. You can see it is right here, fresh water drain. And if you look underneath the camper, it's this big hose right here. You pull that and it drains all, sorry, let me get this turned around. You pull that and it drains all the water that's in your tank out. So what we're doing now is we're draining out all that water with the bleach in it. Once that's empty, we're gonna refill it back up to around that same third, hopefully 15 gallons of just fresh water, no bleach in it. And I'll catch you back as soon as we're done with that. All right, so here we are back inside the camper. So what I've done is as I've come in, um, I still have the pump turned on from when we were cycling all that water. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn that off at this point, just for that step that I was talking about earlier. We're gonna give that a shot and make things a little faster for us. There we go. The reason why I turned the pump off while I was over there at the panel is because I'm going to try something differently. When we were flushing out the antifreeze, I said it took forever for that antifreeze to get out of the water filter tube. Um, and I, I started thinking about it as I, we were getting towards the end, a little late. But I started thinking, why not take that off and just dump it out first? Gets all that antifreeze out, might go a little quicker. So we're going to give that a shot. Hopefully this will get the bleach out of the lines a lot faster because I don't want to sit here and wait another five minutes to get the bleach out. So what we're going to do, is we're going to go back down to that panel that we were at before that has those lines that we uh, switched here. And your camper should have come with a filter wrench. We're going to slip it up behind here. And we're going to take the filter off the tube. And it's in there pretty good. Oh. And don't worry about that. You're going to get a little spray. You got pressure in there from when you were pumping out that fluid before. Um, I did bring a towel just for that reason. So, and there's no way of doing this without getting water all over the place. But we're going to take, we're just going to dump this out in the sink here. And I really think that this is going to speed the process up. Um, and I really hope this is going to speed the process up. But I don't see why it wouldn't. So just twist that back in, take that wrench, twist it tight again. And then while we're here, we got our handy little towel. Just wipe up all that spray that we got all over the place here. And dab up the floor a little bit. I'm not going to go too much because we're going to have to remove this again to install the filter after we got all the bleach out of the line. So. Now, let's go ahead and we're going to turn that pump on and we'll see that fill up. And like I said, this should be getting fresh water in that bleach out of that line. In fact, we might even only go about part way there. Let's go there. Hopefully, that got most of the bleach out of the lines from there to there. So now, this water should be sitting here bleached, should smell like it. And I'm hoping that this just cuts a lot of that time out that it takes to completely flush all that bleach out of this thing. Because it took a long time to get that antifreeze out. I should have tested this with that. So let's dump that back out. And we're not going to do this again. Because I'm hoping that that line from there to here is not as long as I think it is. And by this point, we're already getting fresh water cycling through and not so much bleach water. 
So let's go turn that pump back on. And as you can see, that's going back up. So once we fill that up and we've got the pressure in our line, should be right there. Let's go back to our sink. And what we're going to do here is same thing as we did before, but let me get that camera angle just right. We're going to run it until we no longer smell the bleach. Right now you can smell it. So we want to give it a couple minutes um, as we know before, there we go. As we know before, it took a little bit for that to cycle through. And once we can no longer smell bleach coming out of it, then we know we're good to go. Oh, there we go, fresh and clear. Now we're gonna do the same thing with that hot water. And I can already tell, as you can see down in here, it's foaming up down inside the sink. Now you can see the foam's gone. That tells me that bleach is out of that line already. So, oh, smells great, no bleach. So, now we go back to our bathroom again, like we did before. So, back to the bathroom here. And we're going to do the same thing with the sink. Let's pull that filter, or that, actually, let's leave it in. So you can see that foam. In it. So as you can see, that's eh, not so bad. Foamed up a little bit, but it's already done foaming. And I no longer smell bleach in the line. Now back here in the bathroom, you can see the foam right there. Um, none of these, not this faucet, the toilet, the shower, are as imperative to get all that bleach out of the line because again, you're, you're not drinking this. You're washing your hands with it, washing your body. And yeah, there we go. Yeah, you don't want to smell like bleach. You know, you don't want to wash your body with concentrated bleach, but um, it's watered down pretty good. So same thing with the toilet. We'll look for that soapy clearness. I mean, not a huge deal on the toilet again, like I said. Make sure we got some water in there. There we go. Then, shower. There's that one. Do that hot. There we go. And then we're going to do the shower head again, of course. Um, just so that we are thorough. We got everything as clean as we can get it. Now that's not the pressure. I've only turned the water up a little bit. I don't need it up all the way. There we go. Okay. So that's the inside of the camper. We now have fresh clean lines on the inside of the camper, yet we're not done inside the camper. We gotta go back outside the camper and do the outside faucets, and then when we're done, we're gonna come back in and tackle that filter. So I'm going to head outside and I'll catch you guys just in a minute again. Here we are back outside at that outdoor shower again. Now due to the fact that we're not flushing any antifreeze, it's just pretty much water with a little bit of bleach in it. I'm okay um, just running this on the ground right here. So again, we're just going to turn on that cold water for a second. And we're going to turn that hot water on for a second. Now on these, I'm just kind of going more by sight than I am for smell. Like I said, it's for, the, for me, the outside is nowhere near as imperative as that first fountain because a lot of people will get water to drink out of that first fountain. So, um, so if you've got, yeah, I mean, we're getting all the antifreeze out, that's for sure. But if you've got a little bit of um, bleach still left in these lines, it's not as much of a big deal because these lines are more or less just washing off the dog before they get in the camper or kids or you know, in this case, bring down your grill. So again, with the outside, I got to get the hose. Um, I just, I like to do it with the hose just so I know that the hose is good. Um, the, oops, look at that. Blooper for you right there. Just got water all over me. Um, so again, we're going to go with that cold. And this one, same thing. I'm not worried about getting all over the place. Um, and you can see when it clears up, you can also hear it too. You can hear the bubbles in it. But, oh, there it goes. Nice. Cool. That one's good. Took a little longer than I thought on that one. 
and then with the hot water, and there we go. Um, and I don't know, but let's let's get that water out of the line so that I don't have another accident like I did last time. As you guys can see, eh, not that bad. Cool. So and I'm just gonna put that back, and there we go. Um, our camper is now dewinterized um, as far as all the lines are clear, but we still have two more things we got to do, which we got to go back inside the camper for that. So I will see you guys inside again in a second. As I said, like I said, we got some antifreeze in those first few lines. I dumped into a bucket. I don't want the antifreeze to go on the ground, even though I know it's safe. Um, still better safe than sorry. So I'm going to dump that bucket and I'm just going to dump it in my bathtub here. This way, it all goes into the tanks. And then when we go down and empty the tanks out, everything's good to go. All right, so one more thing left. And again, it goes back to that filter. And we know it's gonna get a little bit of a dirty job. Before we do that, let's go back over to our panel, turn our water pump off. If you don't, it will not just spray a little bit, but it'll continue spraying over and over and over again. We don't want that. So, what we're going to do here is the same thing as like we did before, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to take our wrench, put it around here, and we're going to loosen our filter. And as you can see, it sprays out a little bit. It's got a little bit of pressure built up in there, but luckily we turned the pump off first, so it doesn't spray that bad. And like I said again, I don't know of any way of doing this without getting water spilled a little bit. So why we have the towel. So we're going to dump that in our drain. Now we're ready for our filter and our filter just drops in like that. Then when we twist this in, the filter should automatically line up and as we tighten it up, it should pull the filter into place. And there we go. We've got a nice new clean filter in, ready for another year camping. So again, wipe that excess spill off. We're gonna go turn that pump back on. You'll see it fill back up. There you have it. You just saw me went uh, dewinterize my 2021 Rockwood Mini Light 2509S. Um, again, what we used was um, some bleach, and it was just some cheap Walmart bleach, but it was concentrate. We put it into a red Solo cup, made it easy to bend, pour in. We have our nice camper hoses um, that are bacterial free, so that we could put into the fresh water tank. We had our filter wrench, and then we had a bucket. And I believe that's all we used um, to dewinterize the camper. Now, all in all, without stopping and recording and making sure that you're getting a video, I think this whole process probably takes about 20 minutes tops. Um, I did find that taking off, and I'm looking at it, sorry, taking off the housing to the filter, um, probably for all processes would have worked a lot faster. I bet you if I'd taken that off, dumped that antifreeze out, put that on, let the antifreeze cycle out of the hose, and then taking it off again, dumped it out, it would have gone so much faster. But instead, I didn't do that. Now that it continued to run, so that's a little extra step. But like I said, you could do it the way I did it, which is just let it run forever. Um, and that's not so bad. Or you could do it the other way and probably cut down the time that it takes to dewinterize the camper. Let me know if there's something you guys want to see from us. So um, I'm going to stop rambling, and I'm going to let you guys get back on your day. Um, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you, have not, if you have not done so, please subscribe to the channel as um, that really helps us out. And we'll just see you in the next video. Thank you guys and have a great day.